maybe you from the 1970s when the Los Angeles Rams was known as the prison person because of that defensive line. Or maybe you in the city of St. Louis, the gateway to the Midwest, where the greatest show on turf brought home the first ever Super Bowl championship. Or maybe you in the here and now with the Rams back in LA, winners of Super Bowl 56. You can rock Eric Dickinson. You can rock Marshall Fowl, Isaiah Bruce, and Kurt Warner. Or maybe you rocking Cooper Cup, Aaron Donnay, and Matthew Stafford. It doesn't matter, but when it comes to this, it's all about the Los Angeles Rams. Horns up, Rams house. Time to talk Rams football. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, how y'all doing today? Oh, it is here. The regular season is over. Postseason is just a few, just a couple of days away. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rimley Talk. It's good to be here. Wild card weekend. Y'all already know what it is. We wrapped up the regular season this past weekend. We got a wild card game to get ready for this upcoming weekend. It is good to be a Los Angeles Rams fan. So without further ado, I'm not going to hold too much of your time because we have a lot of news. There's a lot of news going around in the NFL, especially those who are knee deep in football. So we already know two coaches that have impacted the Los Angeles Rams in some form or fashion, good or bad, mainly bad, are no longer coaching their respective teams. First off, Pete Carroll, 14 years with the Seattle Seahawks. We had our share of battles with him. And he really started taking over with the Legion of Boom when they was kicking our tails left and right. And then we finally got him back, and we've been beating him up ever since. After the Legion of Boom, after Russell Wilson has left, and all them good players, so Richard Sherman, Marshawn Lance, uh, Bobby Wagner, who was coming off another all-pro season again at linebacker. That dude is just an all-pro linebacker. Okay, He's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Tyler Lockett, Golden Tate, DK Metcalf. Uh, at one point, Charlie Whitehurst was a quarterback for them and took us out of the playoffs. I mean, we can go on 14 years. The man has been in Seattle since 2010 or 2009, somewhere in there. He steps away. Bill Belichick of the New England Bears. After 24, 25 years. Uh, being in Foxborough, Massachusetts, winning six Super Bowl championships, two of them which came to us. He knocked off the greatest show on turf with Tom Brady as his quarterback. That was the beginning of the Patriot Way dynasty. And then we met again in 2018 when we had Jared Cock as our quarterback, foreshadowing, when they took us and they held us to three points in a 60 minute Super Bowl game. Three points! This is. Two legendary coaches of the NFL stepping away from coaching. Now, it said that Pete Carroll will be staying in Seattle as an advisory role. Bill Belichick is out of New England. That's a couple of things on there. And just for my football fans all around the world, shout out to the godfather of college football, Nick Saban, as he's retiring after becoming a seven-time champion, six of which was at the University of Alabama, where he has dominated the SEC and college football from a time period from, I'm going to say, what, 2009 all the way up to now. That is a domination that will never be duplicated again, in my opinion. So just to bring it all for a circle for coaching perspective in the game of football, Nick Saban, the godfather of college football, Pete Carroll, a Hall of Famer coach, in my opinion, for what he has done with Seattle, not to miss the days of his USC USC days in college. And then the GOAT of the NFL coaching ranks to most people's eyes, Bill Belichick, who is out in the league. Now, now that I got the little pleasant trees out the way, for those that are not related to the Rams, but it's nice to pay your respects while you still can. So I pay my respects to those three coaches. Let's talk Rams football, shall we? Let's talk about it. Because as of right now, we got some things to get into here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start with some news and update. We're going to start with some news and updates and stuff like that as of right now. So those of you who are new, this is an all Eddie Rams podcast. And uh, to begin off, our 2024 opponents has been revealed. Obviously, you already know the, the three teams that I've been that we're playing twice a year. But now, the NFC North. 
is on the schedule. We host the Green. Thank goodness we host the Green Bay Packers one because I got sick and tired of what's going to goddamn Lambeau Field. Thank the good Lord that we are hosting Green Bay for once, and we are hosting Minnesota. We will see if they will still have Kirk Cousins as their quarterback. We'll see what Justin Jefferson is looking like. Okay, we go there. We go back to Ford Field. Yes, I say go. I say back. Those of you who know, you know. If you don't know, you'll understand later on. We go back to Ford Field and we go to Soldier Field. That's gonna be interesting to see where they slot those games at. Okay. We have the AFC East on the schedule. We will be hosting Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. The last time we saw Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills was in SoFi Stadium. It was the opening Sunday night game of the NFL season. No, it was the opening game Thursday night of the NFL season after we won the Super Bowl, and they smacked our ass 31 to 10. We are hosting Tua Time Below, Tyree Hill, and the Miami Dolphins. That's going to be an interesting matchup. We go to the Jets, and we go to Foxborough, where there will be no more Bill Belichick. Go figure. He steps away. We go to New England. How wonderful. And we go to the Jets. So we'll see what that. We'll see when that game is at. Cause we might be facing Aaron Rodgers, ladies and gentlemen. If he's healthy around that time for the New York Jets, we might be facing Aaron Rodgers. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. We also we get to play the Philadelphia Eagles because they finished third in their division of the NFC East. And we finished no, they finished second in the NFC East. We finished second in the NFC West. So we get Philly and that does this time. No Cowboys. We don't have to worry about Cowboys for a season. Thank the good Lord. Thank you for us not having to worry about the Dallas Cowboys next season. All right? We might face them this season still, but we don't have to worry about Dallas Cowboys next season. That's a good thing. And then we we get an extra home game this year because of that 18-week season that we wanted to do now, 17 games. The Las Vegas Raiders come to us. In that regard, so we get the Las Vegas Raiders, who finished second in the AFC West. It was the Kansas City Chiefs, the Las Vegas Raiders, the Denver Broncos, and the LA Chargers. And then we go to New Orleans. So instead of New Orleans coming to us like they did this past season, we go to New Orleans. So we get to go to the Superdome. That should be a fun one, to say the least. A very fun one, to say the least. All right. So that is that. That's going to be some interesting games here. I want to. When they actually make the NFL schedule with dates and stuff, I want to see how they schedule. Because I want to see that stretch. What's the stretch? Because knowing the NFL, it could be a stretch when we got to play the Bills, the Jets, the Eagles, and the Vikings in one stretch. It could be a stretch. Because, you know, it's not easy. Detroit, 12 win team. Minnesota didn't have Kirk Cousins, but they were still fighting and doing that thing. Jordan Love got the Green Bay Packers in the playoffs this year. That's three teams right there. We're going to see what Chicago does. Because Chicago, they're keeping their hair coach. We're going to see if they keep Justin Field, Justin Fields, or they trade Justin Fields and try to go to draft Caleb Williams. That's going to be interesting. Buffalo, Josh Allen, them boys, they are hot. And we, we we felt them last year, week one. Okay. And they won the AFC East again. Okay. They took it from the Miami Dolphins. So that's going to be fun to see. We get to see Tyreek Hill. Oh, we get to see Jalen Ramsey gets to come back to L.A. if he's still with the Dolphins around that time. That's that's interesting. They were that running game with him, most of and Deion H and, and all that stuff. So that should be a fun one. Like I said, we're going to Frostboro, and Bill Belichick ain't there no more. And we might be seeing Aaron Rodgers this time when we go back to Matt Lice instead of playing the Giants, we play the Jets, okay? Jalen Hurts and the Eagles will be making their return to L.A. to face us again. So I want to see where that game is at. Who's going to be the head coach of the Vegas Raiders? It should be Antonio Pierce. I like Antonio. Antonio Pierce did a phenomenal job in the intern role. Can the will Mark Davis and the Raiders do it a second consecutive year when an intern coach comes in, does his job, and has the team looking better, and they still pick another coach? I don't think you can do it twice. And then this has been a little bit of rivalry going on between the Saints and the Rams uh, because of that NFC Championship game that took place. Back in 2018, when the uh, obvious pass interference call was not made, and the Saints fell in overtime to the Los Angeles Rams, that's how the Rams got to Super Bowl and got held the three points to the New England Patriots. All this stuff is starting to tie in. You see this, right? It's gonna be interesting. To see. So we know our, we know the opponents. I just need I just need to wait to what May to get the dates and see what kind of stress we got, and I can really dive into it and really look at it. But so but right now. 
saying the NFC, the NFC North is going to be challenging. Going against the NFC East is going to be challenging. We got Philly coming in. We got Vegas coming in, and we got New Orleans. On top of the fact that we playing Seattle twice, San Francisco twice, and Arizona twice, so it's going to be another fun schedule for us. I can see us having a top ten ranked schedule again. Okay, this time we had we was in the top five. The last two seasons we was in the top five of toughest schedules. This time we might not be in the top five of this year. We might drop a bit, but we still going to be in the top ten. I can guarantee you that. Because let's see, San Fran number one seed in the NFC. Seattle going to look to bounce back, even though they're getting a new coach. Green Bay, a playoff team. Philly, a playoff team. Uh, Bills, AFC Division champions. Miami, playoff team. They're just going to have Aaron Rodgers. We got Detroit, who won the NFC, the NFC North. <laughs> That's eight teams right there. <laughs> That's either in the playoffs or one day. The, this 18 is in the playoffs or one day division in some type of form or fashion. So it's going to be fun to see how this goes with this 2024 schedule. That's the opponent. So back in, so we just gotta wait for some months to like May to find out how the schedule is set up going forward. But we know the opponents, and that's a good thing. So on that note, quick, take a quick break right here, and right? then when we come back, we'll dive into you know what took place in Week 18. The Playmaking Spot is sponsored by Lids Locker Rooms by Lids. Shop hats and official sports gear at Lids. Lids, the leading and number one destination for hats, gears, and everything that moves you. Make it a perfect shop for fans to find official sports hats, merchandise, and gears. Represent your team, your town, and your style with a snap pad, adjustable, fitted hat, or beanie from thousands of college and professional teams. Browse the very latest jerseys and t-shirts for the best teams out there. Lids has officially licensed professional and college sports teams apparel and hats featuring the hottest brands and trends. Shop online or visit one of the 100 stores across the country. Lock them by Lids. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ramley Talk here. Now that we got the 2024 opponents look ahead out the way. Week 18, ladies and gentlemen. We was in Santa Clara to take on the 49ers. The 49ers who already clinched the first seed. They have the bye weekend or our car weekend. They are the number one seed. So the road to Vegas goes through Santa Clara. It's going to be an, it was an instant matchup. Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers have won nine straight games, regular season games, should I say, over the Los Angeles Rams. But nevertheless, no Matthew Stafford, no Cameron Williams, no Cooper Cup, no Aaron Donald for the Rams. See it for San Fran, no Brock Purdy, no Christian McCaffrey, uh, no Trent Williams, Nick Bosa played, Debo played, Brandon Ayuk played, uh, the Nakua did play, but I get the the Nakua in a minute. So it was pretty much the battle back. We have Carson Wentz going against Sam Donald, and the Rams took it 21 20. Outscoring the San Francisco 49ers 14 to 0 in the second half after going to halftime down 20 to 7. Great job by that team. Playing backups, not mainly the starters playing, because we already knew we was in the playoffs. We just it was worrying about seeding for us. We either would be the seventh seed or the sixth seed going in. But we was already in the playoffs. That's one thing about it. Uh San Fran, like I said, already had knocked up the number one seed, the first round by and all that good stuff. So it's just let's just see what happens. Get get make sure both teams are healthy enough going into the playoffs, which I'm pretty sure and I'm pretty sure both people are both coaches of Kyle Shanahan and Sean Bay Ray are very, very happy right now. No major injuries in this game, nothing nothing of concern that took place in this game. Everybody got in the game, everybody left out healthy. So Hey, we get ready for our game this weekend, which I'll get into. San Fran, they get the bye week, so they rest up and they see how playoff, how these games, how wild card weekend plays out, so they find out who they're playing next. Uh, Carson Wentz, 17 for 24 on the day. 163 yards passing, two touchdowns and an interception. Nothing too much to worry about. He also had 17 carries for 56 yards and a touchdown. He had the rushing touchdown, would prove to be the game winning touchdown, by the way. Sam Donald, 16 for 26, 189, one touchdown. 
That's about it. He also had a rushing touchdown on seven catches for 19 yards. It was a great day. Puka Nakua, two, four catches, 41 yards, nothing major, but he did get one of the touchdown passes from Carson Wentz. The other one came to Tyler Johnson, the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer wide receiver, who will elevate off the practice squad because we set some players down. He got another touchdown. Uh, Ronnie Bell got the only touchdown from Sam Darnold. Elijah Mitchell got in the end zone. It's all good. Brandon Ayu, three catches, 25 yards. He was saying two catches, 21 yards. Oh, they were really good, okay? We got the win with the sixth seed going into the playoffs, San Fran. They sitting back chilling. But here's the thing. Kobe Turner tied the franchise record for most sacks in a single season by a rookie. Tying Aaron Donald's 2014 record with nine sacks in a season. Guess who's third on that list, if y'all if you can't really see it? Brian Young, the other. Ricky draft pick for the Los Angeles Rams out of Tennessee. He had eight sacks this season. So Kobe Turner and Byron Young was, was pretty much having a game with it back and forth while we'll getting sacks and whatnot. Kobe Kobe Turner, he didn't get a second against Sam Donald. Byron Young did. That's how Byron Young got the eight. But it's good to see two of our rookies on this list for the franchise record for sacks in a regular season by a rookie. Kobe Turner's top Aaron Donald. Brian Young in third with eight. So can't be mad at that. Love that accomplishment. Love it. Here's the main thing. Ladies and gentlemen. Puka Nakua. He was coming to the game. He needed three catches and about 28, 29 yards to have the receptions record by a rookie and the receiving yards record by the rookie. He got him with the four catches and the 41 yards. Puka Nakua is now the NFL leader in 105 catches by a rookie in a single season. Most receptions by a rookie at 105. And he has the most rookie, and he is the NFL record holder for most receiving yards by a rookie at 1,486. Okay. The receptions record with the 105, he broke Jalen Ross' record that he broke. Four years ago, back in 2000, no, three years ago, back in 2001 with the Miami Dolphins. That's Jalen Waddle. And then he broke a very, very, very old record that's been up since 1960. Billy Graham, when he broke that record with 1,486 receiving yards, Puka Nakua has been an absolute stud of a rookie this season. There's no denying that I am happy that he got both records. And Johnny Man is very happy too. I don't know if y'all seen as soon as he broke a record. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out. Hey, let's go. Get him out. He's healthy. He, broke, he got the records. Let's get him out. We don't need him getting hit. So, but he broke it, I think, in the early part of the third quarter after halftime. So it was good to have him break that record. And then, if you didn't know, now you know. The second winniest coach in Rams history. Is now Sean McVay at 70. He is second all time in regular season wins for the franchise. He's at 70 with a big win, ending a nine game losing streak to Kyle Shanahan and the San Francisco 49ers. He is five games away to he is five games away from tying John Robinson for the most regular season wins in franchise history. We'll see if he'll do that next season because we never know with Sean McVay. He likes. You know, but I think he'll be back next year because I think he's really enjoying this. Is his best work? I was this is Sean McVay's best work as the head coach of the Los Angeles Rams because you're going into the season. A lot of people, including inside Rams Nation, did not have faith in this team to do much of anything. You won the Super Bowl two years ago, the following season last year, you so many injuries on the offensive line, so many injuries. Stafford got hurt, Aunt Donald got hurt, Cup got hurt. Uh, like 14 to 15 different offensive line changes in each game. It was a brismal year last year going 5 and 12. This year, one not much expected. You traded away Jalen Ramsey. Bobby Ryan went back to Seattle. Uh, who do you have? You Cooper Cup, he's out for the first four games of the season with the ankle injury or hamstring injury. Can't remember which one it was. Matthew Stafford, he's not he's not connected with the young talent of Puka Nakua, Tutu Atwell. Uh, you know, so many stories coming out of Rams count that wasn't favorable. 
But if you go back and you listen to the first four episodes of Remy Talk of season four this year that I did, I told you the way the NFC or the way that things that happen in the NFC outside of Los Angeles Rams, the Rams have a chance to make the playoffs all of a sudden. Y'all didn't believe it, but I was on board. Somebody else was on board with me. So they have a chance to win 11 games. They go 11 and 6. They're in the playoffs. 10 and 7. They're in the playoffs. <laughs> I wasn't far off. But this is his best coaching job because he's really playing with house money with a Super Bowl winning quarterback, Super Bowl MVP wide receiver. And you have a bunch of young guys on defense over there. Give me it. I got a shout out to Raheem Morris, too. Raheem Morris has done a pretty good job with his defense. Young, one of the youngest defense in the league. We have our problems. We give up big plays, stuff like that, and whatnot. But this team has fought and fought and fought to the point they are a 10-win team when nobody expected them to win no more than five, I think. They won 10. And they have done a tremendous job of doing so in that regard. So I am thrilled. I'm happy to see this team do what it does, do what they did, and whatnot. So proud of the team, proud of the Rams, proud of Sean McVay, proud of everybody. Ready to go. Great job, all right? Now we're going to take uh, another break here, and then when we come back, it's playoff time, baby. It's playoff time. We'll be back. Welcome to Ringside Chaos, the professional wrestling discussion segment of the Bear of Texas podcast. The only professional wrestling podcast in the world where pro wrestling is discussed passionately, with confidence, with great knowledge, and most of all, in the most sophisticated way. So brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, because chaos is about to be unleashed. Thing with Tony Khan now being in talks to WWE, I'm going to be honest with you. I spoke to this with Ricky Litwinkowicz, aka the Master of Mayhem, and he honestly believes that me talking about Tony Khan buying WWE is a basically I'm kind of wasting my time because Ricky believes it's never going to happen. Okay, now I now don't get me wrong, Ricky, I respect his I respect what he says. He's he could very well be correct. But I got to be honest with you, the fact that Khan is interested in supposedly buying WWE, I mean, to me, that's definitely worth talking about. Now, <laughs> now, I should mention this. Shout out to Ricky, by the way. And I got to mention this, that even Jim Cornette already had something to say. And he said, and I quote, ridiculous to think that could happen, unquote. <laughs> the wrestling fan that's been super supportive of Brody Lee as a wrestler and everything that WWE could have done with him. And, you know, everything that he could have shown and, you know, offered for the wrestling business. You know, for me, I, just, I wasn't just a fan of Brody Lee himself, like, in character. I strongly respected him, you know, as a human being. Like, I had a lot of respect for Jonathan Huber. You know, that's Mr. Brody Lee's real name. So, basically, I had a lot of respect for Brody Lee, Luke Harper, and, of course, Mr. Jonathan Huber. This particular episode was about world-class championship wrestling. And the episode title is, you know, WCCW Wrestling's Lone Star Legacy. And because I am the Bear of Texas, and I do hail from the Dallas-Fort Worth area of the state of Texas, world-class championship wrestling was basically my territory as far as being a wrestling fan goes. Ladies and gentlemen, Ringside Chaos is available on all streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. The Playmakers Bar is proudly sponsored by Fanatics. Fanatics, the number one shop where sports fans across the world love to get their sports gear and fan them on. A wide selection of gears from every league, including the NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL, the NCAA, and of course, the WWE. But it is football, basketball, baseball, hockey, even soccer, golf, no matter what sport it is, there is sports appeal for every fan of every sport. Fanatics, with sports fan shop, and efficient license everything.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ramley Talk. Hope y'all enjoyed those. Uh, shout out to Alex the Bear Man of Texas. You know, I go live. We're on the road to WrestleMania Royal Rumble. It's just 16 days away, just two weeks away from Saturday. And once that is done, it's the world to WrestleMania up in Philly. So y'all get ready for that. It's going to be a nice and lovely road. If you are a WWE fan, also speaking of wrestling, mind us of wrestling. Myself and my good brother, Kool McCain, and a host of other people from time to time, we'll get you, we'll get you caught up on wrestling from Monday Night Raw, AEW, Dynamite, and SmackDown, and plus all pay-per-views in between. So appreciate you checking in with us on that one. Play Call of Sports on YouTube. You can find it there, all right? Now that we're back, we're in playoff mode now. It's playoff mode, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the playoffs for the 2024 of the NFL. All right. There you go. Let me give you the schedule for the playoffs. Beginning with the LC side, the LC will begin playoff. It will begin Super, Car, Super Wild Card Weekend. Yeah, excuse me. And begins with the upstarted Houston Texans who took the LC South by surprise because the Jacksonville Jaguars choked it away. And yes, I did say chop the way, even though I live in the city, we call it like it is. LB hosting Joe Flacco in the Cleveland Browns in the in the four five matchup in the AFC side. That is something to behold. That will be 4:30 on NBC. That Saturday, also on Saturday at 8 p.m. on exclusively on Peacock. Not on NBC, not on CBS, not on Fox. Exclusively on streaming. Peacock, NBC. The Miami Dolphins are going to Kansas City to take on the Kansas City Chief. Tyreek Hill is returning to Arrowhead for the first time since being traded to the Miami Dolphins. The crazy part about this game is it's going to be around two degrees at kickoff. Two degrees. It's going to be cold. It's all outdoors in that game on Saturday. Sunday, Sunday at 1 p.m. on CBS, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers traveling to Buffalo to take on the AFC East champion, the Buffalo Bills, to kick off Sunday's action. At 4.30, the NFC gets their playoffs on the way when the Green Bay Packers head to Arlington, Texas, to take on the Dallas Cowboys at 4.30 on Fox. Mike McCarthy going against his former team at home on this one. Monday Night Football, you have the Philadelphia Eagles going back to Raymond James Stadium to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 8.15. That is on ABC, ESPN, or all ESPN platform. You can say that. But the game of the week, ladies and gentlemen, the game that has the most eyes is Sunday night. And on Sunday night, football owns NBC and Peacock. You have the Los Angeles Rams taking on the Detroit Lions. Here are the odds, ladies and gentlemen, for the NFC. San Fran has the best odds as they are the number one seed. Which is rightfully so. The second seed is the Dallas Cowboys. Third seed, the Detroit Lions. The Eagles have a better chance than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, even though the Buccaneers are the fourth seed and the Eagles are the fifth seed. Green Bay and then the Rams. All right. But like I said, Sunday night football, the game of the week. Los Angeles Rams, Detroit Lions, and the Motor City. Ford Field, ladies and gentlemen. Ford Field, easy game info. It's going to be 11 degrees, but the game is played inside in the fourth field, so weather should not play a factor in this game. The Detroit Lions are a three-point favorite over under. It's 51 and a half on this one. We're talking NBC is going to be on and popping because Matthew Stafford is returning to Detroit. And in returning to Detroit of Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff is facing the Los Angeles Rams, all right? Now, I do believe these two teams met before out in L.A. Wasn't really much to hype about because it wasn't much to think about between those two teams. You know, Rams was on, ready to go on a run, to run to the Super Bowl. That's what happened Jerry Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions. It was their first year. They was getting some things worked out, okay? But this one, however, is for the Detroit Lions winning their first NFC North Championship in 30 years. The first time they are hosting a playoff game at Ford Field in 30 years. And the golden child of Matthew Stafford is returning. Okay. He is returning to the land of where he became the NFL quarterback. All right. 
It is so good. This trade happened back in 2001, so there's a lot. There's a lot to look forward to when it comes to these two quarterbacks. So let me give them to you. Matthew Stafford, since he's the since he's the visiting party, he Matthew Stafford played 12 years in it, 12 years in Detroit. And in those 12 years in Detroit, he threw for 45,109 yards. He completed 62.6% of his passes, throwing 282 touchdown passes, 144 interceptions. His record in Detroit was 74-90 and one. He got the he got the Detroit Lions to three playoff appearances. They lost all three of them. And the three seasons that he has been with the Rams, including this season that just finished. Matthew Stafford has thrown for 10,938 passing yards, completing 65.7% of his passes with 75 touchdowns, 36 interceptions. He is 24 and 17 as a Ram, 4 and 0 in the playoffs as a Ram, and is a Super Bowl champion. That is Matthew Stafford from Detroit to LA. Love it. Gotta love it. Now let's go to Jared Goff from LA. To Detroit. Jared Goff spent five seasons with the Rams, throwing for 18,171 passing yards, completing 63.4% of his passes, passing for 107 touchdowns to 55 interceptions. His record with the Rams was 42 and 27. He had six games in the playoffs with the Rams. He went 503 and three. Three seasons with the Detroit Lions. He has thrown for 12,258 yards, completing 66.5% of his passes. He has thrown for 78 touchdown passes to 27 interceptions. And his record with the Detroit Lions is 24-23-1. All right. And then just now let's compare both quarterbacks since the trade. Since the trade, ladies and gentlemen, both guys have won 24 games for their respective teams. Jared Goff has the better completion percentage at 66 and a half to Matthew Stafford 65.7. Goff has thrown for more passing, has has more passing yards here, I say, at 12,258. Matthew Stafford has only thrown for 10,938 with the Rams. 78 touchdown passes for Goff, 75 for Matthew Stafford. Both have turned the ball over 41 times. Quarterback rate, passer rating is 95.8 for Matthew Stafford, 96.5 for Jared Goff. Matthew Stafford has won the Super Bowl title with his new team. Jared Goff has yet to get there with his team. All right. That's just since the trade, okay? Because we all know this game is going to be evolved around both quarterbacks, mainly Matthew Stafford going back to Detroit. And then you're going to sprinkle in Jared Goff facing Sean McVay again. That's that. This season, though. This season, how? This, this season. Matthew Stafford is 10 and 7. Jared Goff is 12 and 5. Jared Goff has completed 67.3% of his passes to Matthew Stafford, 62.3. I mean, I got these numbers for y'all. I, I have to show you to you. Jared Goff is second in the NFL in passing with 4,575 yards. Matthew Stafford was 11 at 3,965 yards. Now, that does include that Matthew Stafford did miss two games. I don't know. Just throw a caveat. Matthew Stafford did miss two games. He missed the Green Bay game. And he missed the season finale. He missed two games. Passing touchdown, Jared Goff is at 30, which is fourth in the league. Matthew Stafford is 24, which is 11 in the league. 11 turnovers for Matthew Stafford, 12 turnovers for Jared Goff. Passer rating, Jared Goff is at 97.9, which is ninth. And a passer rating for Matthew Stafford is 92.5, which is 15. All right. So those are the quarterbacks that you're going to hear a lot about when this game is getting closer and closer. And we get kickoff, okay? That's what you're gonna hear about. This is what it's gonna be. This is what you're gonna hear. There's nowhere around. This is exactly what you're gonna hear. We're gonna talk about Matthew Stafford and Jared Goff a lot. Now we got that out the way. Now let's get to the league rankings. This is how the league rankings finished off for the regular season. The Detroit Lions have the third rank offense in the league. The Los Angeles Rams have the seventh rank offense in the league. Defensive wide, the Rams are 20th in the league. The Detroit Lions are 19th in the league. The second rate of offense, passing offense in the league goes to the Detroit Lions. The Los Angeles Rams are 10th in passing offense. And the Russian offense, the fifth Russian offense in the league is the Detroit Lions. And the Rams finished 11th in rushing. Okay. That does get that does that does take into account that we didn't have Cameron Williams for six, about five, six games this year. Okay. 
and five or six games. Right now, we got that out the way. Speaking of those games, Karen Williams has carried the ball 228 times. He has rushed for 1,144 yards and has 12 touchdowns on the year. The leading rushes for the Detroit Lions, even though they have a two-headed monster backfield with Josh Gibbs, is Montgomery, David Montgomery, 219 carries for 1,015 yards rushing with 13 touchdowns. All right, receivers, the leader is Puka Nakua, obviously for the Rams with 105 receptions, just under 1,500 receiving yards and six touchdowns for the Detroit Lions, Jared Goff's favorite target is like my Rod St. Brown. 119 catches, 15, 15 receiving yards, and 10 touchdowns. Now, like I said, the Detroit Lions have a two-headed monster backfield, which is clearly Derrick Montgomery and Josh Gibbs. So we got to pay attention to that. I'm a Rod St. Brown, one of the top wide receivers in the league who did not make it to the Pro Bowl. They call him one of the biggest Pro Bowl snows of this season, which I agree with because that man has been balling. You have Josh Reynolds for Detroit. You have other guys. Uh, most likely they'll be out the rookie sensation tight end, uh, Sam Laporta, which is going to be a very disappointment for them to not have a great weapon like that for them. So Jared Goff has weapons. He can he can sling the ball around. You see, he has more passing yards than, than Matthew Stafford this year. He almost he almost at forty six hundred passing yards. But nevertheless, we did go four weeks, the first four weeks without Cooper Cup. Count five, and you count the San Fran game. So Matthew Stafford had to get used to two two Atwell, Puka Nakua. Uh, as of late, the Demarcus Robinson has come on strong as a, as the season winding down. So that's another option. We know about Tyler Higby. When Tyler Higby missed the game against the Baltimore Ravens, Davis Allen, our rookie tight end, stepped in admirably. So that's another weapon that we can use. Collins has been a beast for us in the backfield. That running game has is different with Collins running the ball. You still got Ward Street, but who can still do some things. It's going to be an interesting battle, man. You're talking 51 and a half is the over on them going over. I'm going. I'm not a betting man. I don't do stuff like this, but for this one, because it's playoff, and I know people want to hear that. 51 and a half, I think you should go over. I can see 50, I can see 53 to 54 points scored in this game. You're talking two of the top 10 offenses in the league, two of the top 10 passing offenses in the league. The Rams are just outside the top 10 in Russian, and Detroit is fifth. So it's going to be some points scored in this game. Now, which defense can step up and get key stops, okay? We already talked about Kobe Turner. Tying the franchise breaker for Ricky's and sets in the season with nine. Uh, Brian Young's third. Our other Ricky. And then who who did who did uh Kobe Turner tie the record with? Oh, yeah, Aaron Donald, who's still on the field, by the way. Raheem has done a great job. We got to work on our secondary. Our secondary gives up big plays, but Detroit gives up big plays too. So it's going to be interesting to see which team can lessen the big plays on the other one. It's going to be interesting to see which defense can get the other team to punt their party one more time. Okay? So there's a lot going into this game, but it's going to be an interesting fact. It's going to be rolling around the quarterback. So Jared Goff and Matthew Stafford, they, they the ones that swap places and whatnot in there. In the playoffs, they're at four fields. It's the first time in 30 years that Detroit got to host the playoff game. Matthew Stafford is returning to be the first obstacle on this playoff journey for the Detroit Lions. Because they won the NFC for the first time in 30 years. It's a lot when it comes to both of these quarterbacks. So it's going to evolve around that. But I think defense and special teams might play a pivotal role and see who makes it to the division round and who is one and done in the playoffs in this game. ESPN has as a 54% favorite of the Detroit Lions to defend home turf and make it to the division round. And if they do, they'll be seeing the Either they're most likely seeing the Dallas Cowboys because Dallas Cowboys is favorite to beat the Green Bay Packers. But you never know. That's why they play the game. That's Chris Brown used to say. The Rams are getting 46% of a chance to win this game. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. But for me, I'm taking the Rams 31 27. They walk in the fourth field. They break the hearts of Detroit Lions fans across the city of Detroit and across the state of Michigan. They win 31 37 and 31 27. Matthew Stafford returns to Detroit for the first time since being traded and leaves victorious. All right, that's just the way I see it. And by the way, that puts you at 58. All right, so that's the over. 
And that will do it for this edition of Ramley Talk, ladies and gentlemen. I will see y'all next week, either in a win or a loss. Either I'll be recapping the wild card game and looking at the season in totality, or I'll be recapping the wild card weekend and previewing the division around. Until then, we shall see. For the Playmaker, I'm signing off. I'll catch y'all next week. Thank you for tuning in to Ramley Talk. Ramley Talk is sponsored by Fanatics, Lids, and Paramount Plus. Get your favorite sports appeal with Fanatics or Lids and get great streaming service with Paramount Plus. If you want to donate to the program, you can donate to us via Cash App. Dollar sign D Playmakers. That is again, dollar sign D Playmakers. And remember, you can follow and subscribe to Ramley Talk on all podcast directories, including Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. And those of you who are on Apple, leave us a great review, leave comments on how you feel about Ramley Talk and the episode that you listen to. Tune in again next time for more Ramley Talk, hosted by the Playbook.